Hi everyone, it's Kim Geist here. I'm gonna stall for a little bit until we get uh, some attendees rolling in. I don't want anyone to uh, miss instructions, but you are here for the 60 minute uh, indoor cycling workout with the Valley Preferred Cycling Center. And we're gonna be working a little bit on uh, high cadence work and some threshold work uh, as the description says. Uh, so again, just stalling for a couple seconds here until we get some attendees rolling in. Uh, the basis of these indoor sessions, and they will be um, potentially continuing on on Thursday night, same time, same place. Uh, the basis of them is to get everybody together, uh, riding virtually together. We unfortunately at this time need to, to socially distance ourselves, uh, so that means for local folks, we're not on the Thursday night crit. We're we're not riding the derby together. Uh, unfortunately, our, our velodrome is closed, so uh, no group sessions or, or training or racing, as you all know. But we can come together indoors and follow the same workout and support one another, and hopefully have some fun doing it. Um, I think everybody who knows me fairly well knows that I do not like indoor training. <laughs> uh, but I know as long as I have one other person there with me, even if it's virtually, uh, I have um, quite a bit more support and motivation goes up. So we're broadcasting from uh, the guy's household garage today. I feel like I should have put some motivational posters behind me or uh, some jerseys or medals or something, but not planning this to be a, a permanent situation. So uh, we won't plan for that. But I see we have quite a few uh, people joining in now. So hopefully you all have your bikes ready uh, on rollers or trainers, uh, ready to get started and warm up, which I'll explain in just a couple seconds. And you should have uh, some water, potentially a towel with you, because uh, we will be working uh, at a decent intensity, let's say. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on my bike because I only have an hour with you. So I don't wanna wait too long. And if you have a device or a timer that you're using, you're gonna to want to go ahead and start that now, as I just did. So as we get started for warm up, uh, very easy spinning. So if you use zones, this is zone one. I'm putting out 50 watts at the moment. We're going to complete 10 minute warm up, and it's gonna be progressive. So we're gonna progress from zone one, uh, I would call that a recovery zone, all the way up to a higher intensity. If you, again, if you use zones, it's a VO2. Uh, working up your threshold number, that's about 105, 106% of threshold. You shall have a device in front of you, so you should be able to figure that out pretty easily. If you use heart rate, that's it's the same value, so about 105 to 106% of your threshold heart rate. If you're completely lost <laughs> with the jargon, uh, or you don't use any sort of device, we're gonna use a rate of perceived exertion. So on a scale of one to 10, one being the easiest effort uh, that you've ever done, and 10 being the hardest effort that you've ever done, we're going to progress from one all the way up to about a six or seven. And I started my timer, so about a minute and a half in. So about the time you get to five minutes or so, you're looking at being halfway between that perceived exertion of six or seven and a one right now. Maybe we're approaching a two at about two minutes. Hopefully you all have some sort of airflow at home as well. I'm in my garage, so it's it's pretty cool. It was actually chilly before I started moving. So I'm coming up in about two and a half minutes in. As you go through this warm-up, your cadence 
is self-selective to whatever feels comfortable to you. If you're curious what my comfortable cadence is, it's about 100 at the moment for warm up. Some of you track racers are probably in that realm, even a little bit higher. Some uh, longer, steady type riders, like a century rider, probably a little bit lower, and that's fine. In about 30 seconds, we're halfway through warm up. So right about now your breathing's becoming a little bit heavier. My sentences will get a little shorter. So in about a minute, you should be pedaling hard enough that you're riding about threshold or about the pace that you go out and do. A fairly long time trial. So something that you can sustain that's a little bit uncomfortable. So you have to shift down a little bit, bigger gear. More power to the pedals.
So now we're at that two and a half minutes ago mark. So it's about your time trial pace. That's not too long to go. A minute and a half to go. One minute to go, so especially this last minute, you're increasing your pace aggressively over that minute. So maybe the last 10 to 15 seconds, you're actually hitting that VO2 output for that six to seven from the one to 10 scale. Thirty seconds to go. And 15, you hit another shift. Five. And done. So you return to a very easy pedaling as you did at the very beginning. We're going to take a five minute break before we get into the first effort. The first effort won't be uh, too difficult in terms of intensity, but it'll be more a technical effort. So that is, we're going to do a high cadence effort for three minutes. And again, if you are, say, a track rider, if you're one of the juniors who might be watching, who's accustomed to riding and racing in very small gears, I'm gonna ask you to really try and push yourself. So most likely you'll be aiming to hold say 130 RPM, a very light gear. So your output shouldn't really be much above a tempo pace, which would be equivalent to going out and doing a, a faster group ride. So the power to the pedals will only be about that fast group ride pace, but your cadence will be very high when you're doing that. If you're on the opposite spectrum, and you're say one of those century riders, one of those uh, recreational riders, pushing yourself might be 110 RPM. And if you're not quite sure where to start, Start on the low side, and you have three minutes, go ahead and work your way up. If you're tapping out in your cadence, which means you're maybe bouncing in your saddle, uh, your pedal strut stroke is very choppy, uh, that, that's your max. So try and settle in just a little bit below that. What's gonna help you do this is a nice firm foundation. So my, Upper body will not be locked, my elbows won't be locked, my shoulders, but I'll be supporting myself firmly. So I have a little bit of bend in elbows, my hands won't be a uh, massive grip on the bars, they'll be relaxed, keeping it open them a little bit. 
and with my upper body, I'll be concentrating on keeping that very still. So my, my legs are basically acting like pistons. And you just think about making the upper body the firm foundation for what your lower body is doing. And you should see your cadence start to come up. We have about two more minutes rest before this first effort. So remember, it's not about uh, pounding the pedals and producing a whole lot of force and power. It's about being very smooth. So not riding above that group ride, uh, fast group ride tempo. They're coming up on one more minute of rest. You can almost think of this effort like finishing off that warm up. That can be super intense. It'll definitely get you warm. Your muscles will be firing. And the thought is that we'll be increasing your neuromuscular coordination. So how fast your brain talks with your legs and gets those contractions to happen fast and fully. So we're coming up on 20 seconds to go. Sit down a little bit in your cassette. Got the experiment for the first couple seconds. Definitely not a big ring effort. And five seconds. And up. So this low output, I would be able to talk to you the entire time. But it will be uncomfortable just by the cadence that I'm holding. So everybody should be upwards of 110. If you can spin it to win it, you're up at around 130. For one minute in. If this doesn't feel like a challenge to you in terms of spinning yet, you can go and start to increase your cadence. I feel pretty challenged. <laughs> I'm only riding a 160, 170 watts, which is about endurance space for me, a couple hours. But cadence is over 120. So we're coming up on one minute to go. Remember, nice and smooth pedal stroke. Firm but loose upper body. If 
30 seconds to go. Fifteen. Five. And good. So you're back to the nice easy paneling. Zone one if you will. So the next effort starts the intensity. And from the description, that's your threshold work. So our first effort after this five minute rest again, will be sort of bouncing around that, that magical threshold number if you have one. So the first three minutes of a nine minute effort will be what I'll call a sub-threshold, which means to hold the very bottom of your, your threshold zone. Uh, the very bottom is about 90% of that magical number uh, if you're using power. It's about 95% of that threshold heart rate. And it's gonna be about a four on the perceived exertion scale of one to 10. That's your first three minutes of nine minutes. Your next three minutes will be what I'll call a super threshold. So it's gonna be at the very top of your threshold zone, which is 105% of your threshold power, 105% of your threshold heart rate, or a perceived exertion of five, about. Uh, I will tell you, if you're someone like myself who threshold is the part of fitness that you struggle with, it will feel like more than that. Uh, that's, that's your textbook answer, five. I would give it maybe up to seven. So that's your second three minutes. Your next three minutes will be back to that sub threshold. So again, it's a nine minute effort. The first three minutes, sub threshold, right at the bottom of your zone. The next three minutes, super threshold, right at the top of your zone. The next three minutes, back to the bottom again, sub threshold. So we're gonna be doing under, over, under, and the average of that will be about in the middle of your threshold zone. So about the output that you would put out in a, a long time trial. And we have two more minutes till we get going. So the thought process on this effort is very similar to the high cadence. Uh, you're going to be putting out a lot more force now, so it should be, in a way, a little bit easier to keep your, your upper body still and not wasting any extra energy. You're still keeping mind in those same major points. So firm upper body, loose grip, and in the abdominal core region uh, that's strong but not locked out. You do need to breathe. Okay, and we're coming up in one minute to start of this.
in 30 seconds. You start getting your bike in gear. It will most likely be a big ring effort. Again, you'll probably have to play with your gears a little bit for the first couple seconds to see if that fall into the rhythm. Especially if you're using heart rate. Remember that's always delayed. So no sprinting off the line. All right, five seconds. And up. So three minutes. Right at the bottom of your threshold or time trial pace. Perceived exertion. Four, five-ish. Cadence is self-selected. It's okay to shift at any point if you need to make an adjustment on that as well. Good, halfway through the first three minutes. Thirty seconds to the change. Five. Okay, up for the next three minutes. A little stronger effort. Good, stay on it. Half 
halfway through this level. Halfway through the whole thing. Good, stands off a bit. Got 30 seconds to go. Before we go back down. Back down. This could be the hardest part. Coming off that harder effort, but still having to maintain the very bottom of your threshold zone. You have less than three minutes to go. Good. You made it through that minute. It's probably your hardest one. Nice and smooth. Coming up on one minute to go. Good. Coming up on 30 seconds to go. Hold on. Fifteen. All the way. And good. Back to your easy spinning. Hope everybody needs their towel right now, like I do. <laughs> Thank you. 
So whether training or racing, I'm a very firm believer in being in the moment. And that is concentrating on what you're doing right now. So that's what you concentrate on immediately in this rest period. Okay, four minutes ago. But I haven't told you yet what the rest of the workout is, which is on purpose. You probably all sort of experienced that phenomenon where your first effort's really good because you're rested, you're fresh, you're feeling good and confident. And you go through a whole workout and maybe your performance starts to go down until you get to that last effort. Then all of a sudden, that's your second best effort. And there's no reason that it should be because you should have been fatigued throughout this whole workout. So that last effort should be your worst. So I like to oftentimes, uh, as an athlete or a coach, uh, either myself or concentrate on just what I'm doing in the moment, not particularly sharing what's going to be coming up next. So each effort that you do should be really good quality because you're not sort of projecting onto what the rest of the workout is. So in this case, we're going to be doing the same thing. One more nine minute effort in the three minute jumps. I will tell you, however, this is the last one for this. <laughs> so uh, really concentrate on uh, putting the power and the force down in the pedals, upper body nice and smooth, and know that this is your last really high intensity effort uh, just for this hour workout. And we are halfway through the rest of the moment. So two and a half more minutes. If you're struggling with motivation at all during this time period where we're sort of stuck by ourselves, obviously, you know, riding with others and knowing that they're going through the same thing that you are helps. Um, but also making things as easy for yourself as possible. I mentioned at the beginning that I despise riding indoors. I'll do anything to uh, not make that happen, which in the past has included going out and snow covered roads that have a tire with that I can make it through or a sleet or um, like the wind advisory that we had here in Pennsylvania today. So if I knew I had to do an indoor workout, I made it as easy as possible myself. Uh, I always had a trainer bike that lived on the trainer, trainer shoes that lived right underneath that bike. So the only thing I ever had to do was put my kid on, fill my water bottle, grab my towel, and get on. There was no work involved to it at all, and it made things as easy as possible my, for myself. So I keep the, the training up, keep the motivation up. We are about 30 seconds away from the start of the second effort. So again, nine minutes, three sub threshold, three super, three sub. You should be getting your bike in gear. Five. And up. Nice and smooth on this first three minutes. Settle into your rhythm.
Good, halfway through this first step. Good, 30 seconds to go. And up. This is your harder step. Good, nice and smooth here too. Remember this is your last hard effort. You can leave it all out there. Good. Halfway through the step. Let's go. Have one minute to go on this one. Come on. And 30 seconds. And back down. To the last step, good. Remember this could be your hardest part. We've got power through.
Good, stay on top of it. Nice and smooth. Good. Halfway through this part. Great. One minute to go. Thirty seconds. Come on, all the way. Ten. And good. Easy, easy. So we have five minutes, easy spinning again. And we'll have one final effort, which as I promised, will not be nearly as intense as the last two. It's actually a repeat of that first high cadence effort. So by now, you fatigue yourself quite a bit. Neuromuscular coordination, the way your brain talks to your muscles, makes them fire uh, correctly and fully. It's probably diminished. So what felt like a super easy interval at the beginning of the session should not be absolutely killer for you, but it should be quite a bit more challenging because those pathways should, if you did those last two efforts correctly, uh, have slowed down by now. So remember, if you're um, a junior on restricted gears, if you're a chap racer, your goal RPM is still about that 130 for three minutes or building up to it. And if you're that century rider, your goal might be closer to 110. If you're, say, a road racer in between, uh, maybe 120. So make the most out of your recovery for right now. This uh, last uh, high cans effort will be the last effort of the, the workout. And for those of you who are really in tune with what we're doing, uh, I did those last two efforts. Those basically make up a classic 20 minute threshold interval. We did 18 minutes, a short break in between, and tried to divert your focus uh, every three minutes as to what you're actually doing. So hopefully that never, it didn't feel like a, uh, 20 minute interval that you've ever done before, it shouldn't have been that mentally excruciating for you. Uh, but we got in a good amount of work, so that's great.
Okay, and we have about two minutes left here, so it's really easy for us the high cadence effort. This workout uh, as a whole is pretty applicable to most riders. Um, everybody needs really a pretty good aerobic ability, even if you're a sprinter. Uh, even on the track, you need a good amount of aerobic ability to get through all those sprint rounds, all those carrying rounds. Uh, that might feel the most of the stretch. Certainly if you're a sprinter on the road, you need to be coming into that sprint finish with a lot left in the tank. So you really do need that aerobic ability. And efficiency if you're producing power through high cadence is useful for everybody across the board. We got about one more minute to go. Or under 30 seconds, so you can get your bike in gear. Remember, this is uh, most likely a small running effort. Maybe if you're on the rollers, you don't have a lot of resistance using a little bit bigger gear. Five. And up. Three minutes. Nice and smooth upper bodies. I agree with myself, this does feel harder than when I first did it. <laughs> Coming up on halfway. You can increase your cadence any. Now it's time to do it. Otherwise, just hold on. One minute to go. Nice and smooth, long cadence. And 30 seconds to go. Is 
10, 5, and good. Good, back to the spinning. <clears throat> so, I made it through. That's good. I did as well. Uh, so, we have about five minutes left until the hour uh, for cool down. You could take 10 if you need it. It's probably pretty advisable. Spring your heart rate back down to uh, near baseline for, for moving. Your blood pressure stabilized. So, you don't hop off. Right away, and it plummets in the face. That'll be bad. <laughs> and also keep some muscle contractions going through spinning uh, because your body doesn't have a very good mechanism to return blood from your extremities at the bottom of your body back up to your heart and your lungs to reoxygenate your blood. So if we spin a little bit afterwards, that means we're helping with our recovery. Sort of flushing those uh, waste products that we just produced out of our system, getting more oxygen in our blood, and that'll help for uh, any workout that we're doing in the next couple days. Uh, so I don't know of what anybody could have a question on for a stationary indoor cycling workout, but um, we do have a couple minutes here. And if Anne can see your comments, uh, that would come through. So if anybody has any questions or comments, you can feel free to shoot those through. and do my best to answer. Uh, the Velodrome is planning on doing these sessions for at least the next couple weeks, or maybe as long as uh, we're forced to sort of distance away from one another. Uh, there will be some different people running the sessions, but should be Thursday night, so at 6.15. It's the same time, same place. And we're about halfway through this five minutes. So when I get off here, it'll be shower first because I got sort of gross even though it's cool in the garage. Uh, recovery drink, recovery food, some sort of snack, and stretching. Interestingly enough, even though I retired as a professional cyclist or say an elite level cyclist uh, in November, I've still maintained my 10 minute daily stretching at night. It's a great habit, which is good. And it's certainly good if you're an athlete, an active individual. Okay, great. So I'm at the end of my hour. So you guys can keep spinning for five minutes or so uh, if you'd like, but I'll be signing off. So 
I uh, hope you guys enjoy the workout and see everybody soon. Okay, bye-bye.